Hey guys, Dr. Cole here, and in today's video, I want to talk with you about the dangers of industrial fats and oils, how to find these things hidden in our foods, and how the how they're made today, why they're so damaging and inflammatory for our bodies. So um, I'm going to be reading for you a pamphlet from a group called the Weston A. Price Foundation. If you've watched other videos of mine in the past, you know that I am a member and a big supporter of the Weston A. Price Foundation. I believe we owe a lot of our um, nutritional knowledge of what foods are healthy for our bodies to Dr. Weston A. Price and the work that he did in the 1930s. For more about that, <coughs> go back to my channel and watch some of those other videos. Today, we're going to be talking about how uh, a lot of the industrial fats and oils that are found in all of our foods. If you turn over your, if you go to the grocery store and you enter in the middle aisles and you get anything that comes in a wrapper, a package, a box, anything that has like a long laundry list of ingredients, you're going to notice that the oils we cover here today are found in most of the processed foods in America. Not only are they rancid and inflammatory for our bodies, but they've only been consumed for a very recent time period. If we go back in history, the oils that we're consuming today would have never been consumed in the previous few thousand years. So we'll talk about why that's the case right now, what oils to remove from your diet, and how to return back to the more ancestral healthy fats that, cause, that give your body a lot of benefits too. So, we're going to scroll down here. I'm not going to read you the whole article. I'll leave this for you to read about the dangers of cancer formation, heart disease, premature aging, immune function, liver damage, depressed learning ability. Um, you can read all that for yourself. But where I want to go to first is where it says, what are the industrial fats and oils? So, we're going to read one uh, line of this trifold here. <coughs> Excuse my sinuses. So, um, it says... Let's read this out loud. It says, industrial fats and oils, also called vegetable oils, these came on the market with the invention of the stainless steel roller press in the 1890s. So at the turn of the century, around the year 1900, uh, about the time of the Industrial Revolution, that's when these seeds and oils started coming onto the market. Now, this technology allowed manufacturers to squeeze oil out of hard seeds. So prior to that time, the only plant-based oils came from oily fruits, like olives, coconuts, palm fruits, and very oily seeds like flaxseed and sesame seeds, which could be extracted using slow-moving stone presses. So all throughout history, let's talk about like olive oil, for example. You would put a bunch of olives into a big stone trough, and you would roll a heavy stone over top of it to press the oil out. That's traditionally how you would have gotten oil from plant-based sources. Now it says the first seed manufacturers used to produce vegetable oil were cotton seeds. It says cottonseed was a waste product of the cotton industry. So the manufacturer, what do you know here, Procter & Gamble, used very clever marketing strategies to advertise the lipid oils for cooking and salad dressings and, and the industrial hardened uh, shortenings such as Crisco for, for cooking and baking. So they promoted the idea that their cottonseed oil products were safer and healthier than the, than the traditional fats like oil, uh, the, than, sorry, than traditional fats and oils like butter, lard, tallow, and coconut oil. So back up here for a minute. Prior to the Industrial Revolution, people were eating animal fats that had been consumed for thousands of years with great health, like grass-fed butter, you know, chicken, chicken fat, beef tallow, lard, coconut oil, and also other plant-based oils like olive oil, flaxseed, um, and, and, and the like. Anything that was traditional and been consumed for thousands of years offers good benefit to our body. We'll talk about the health benefits of, of healthy fats in a minute here. It goes on to say that soon, manufacturers learned to extract oil from corn, soybeans, safflower, and other seeds. And today, 80% of all vegetable oil comes from soybeans. Let's pause here for a, minute, for a minute. So all these other things that we use now that's in all of our ingredient lists, like corn oil, uh, canola oil, soybean oil, most of those crops, whether you know it or not, are genetically modified. Over 95% of those crops are now genetically modified in America. So not only are the oils pressed out of these seeds very unstable, inflammatory, and rancid when we put them into our ingredients, but they're even worse so because they're also now genetically modified. When they were first doing this in the 1890s and 1900s, there was no such thing as genetically modified seeds back then. That began in the 1990s. So as inflammatory as they were to begin with, it was like adding fuel to the fire once we took those same seeds and now genetically modified them. So it goes on here to say that, where are we? These are the basic ingredients in cooking oils, margarine spreads, and shortenings that are used in the home and in cookies, pastries, chip bars, snack foods, and commercially fried foods. 
You guys, just go read the nutrition labels for all the things in our modern grocery stores, our fast food. As we said, anything that comes in a, in a package, a wrapper, a bag, a box, if it has a laundry list of ingredients, you're going to find these unhealthy rancid oils in it. It says that since vegetable oils contain no cholesterol because only animal foods contain cholesterol and are very low in saturated fat, the vegetable oil industry created the false impression that foods containing cholesterol and saturated fat were bad for us, but that vegetable oils were good. Unfortunately, it's becoming increasingly evident that the, that the industrial fats and oils, whether liquid or solid, cause many health problems in adults and children. <clears throat> and moreover, the traditional fats, especially animal fats, are critical and good for your health, good for fertility and having healthy children. While there are many unhealthy ingredients in the modern diet, those that have the most serious adverse effects are the industrial fats and oils. So you guys, let's go back up to the top a minute and talk about healthy fats for a minute. Fat has been vilified in this country. There's a reason why everything has marketing on the labels for low fat, uh, you know, light diet, low fat products, because we have this impression today that fat is gonna cause you to be fat, cause atherosclerosis, heart disease, and all these other issues. Well, the, the reality couldn't be further from the truth. The reality is that we'll read here in a second that these rancid fats and oils are what drives inflammation in our body. <laughs> and that healthy fats and oils actually help to repair the cell membranes. Every cell in your body has a double layer membrane around it that allows nutrients to enter into your cells and helps with cellular repair and function. Even your brain and your nervous system. How many people have, how, how big of an issue is cognitive decline today and things like Alzheimer's and Parkinson's and dementia. You know, ever since we started cutting out animal fats from our diet and replacing it with these industrial inflammatory fats and oils, cognitive decline and, and neurodegenerative diseases has, have gone through the roof. So the reality is that saturated fat is great for your brain. Cholesterol is needed for your brain to function correctly. Your brain, your spinal cord, and your nervous system are made up of 60 to 65% fat and cholesterol. <laughs> the healthy animal fats that we get like grass-fed butter and beef tallow and lard and chicken fat, those things actually help you to absorb the fat-soluble vitamins that we need uh, for many functions in our body to run correctly. So this vitamin A, vitamin D, E, and K. <laughs> you need to get healthy fats in your diet to be able to absorb those nutrients correctly. Even a lot of our plant-based oils, I mean plant-based diets are such a big thing today I've done videos talking against that because I believe it's a very unhealthy way to eat. It's only plants in our diet. <laughs> Even the, the minerals and the vitamins from our plants, many of them have to be activated and absorbed in our body only in the presence of healthy animal fats. So we're going to read one more thing here. It says, you know, manufacturers, they start with the cheapest seeds available, usually soybeans and canola oil or canola seeds. They extract the oil at very high temperatures and pressures. And the last fraction of oil is removed using, a he using hexane as a toxic solvent. So at this point, once the oils are first extracted, because they're not, na they're not like olive oil. You press out the olive oil from the olive, you're going to be able to use that right away. It's very pleasant smelling, pleasant tasting. It's, your body will recognize it as a real food. These <laughs> unnatural vegetable oils, at this point, once they're first extracted, are brown, smelly, rancid, and they look like gunk. They're subjected to steaming for cleaning, and this destroys all the vitamins and natural antioxidants, but the pesticides and the solvents remain. Now then it says, <laughs> additional refining involves more heating, the additions of certain chemicals, drying, degumming, deodorization, and the addition of dangerous industrial antioxidants. In all, these fragile liquid oils are heated five times before they're bottled. To make hardened fats, manufacturers use a process called partial hydrogenation. This is most of our fast foods today on the market. These oils are mixed with a finely ground nickel catalyst and then put into a reactor where at high temperatures and pressures, they're flooded with hydrogen gas. The molecular structure is rearranged and what goes into the reactor is a liquid oil. What comes out is a smelly, lumpy, gray, semi-solid. Soap-like emulsifiers are then, mi are then mixed in to remove all the lumps. The oil is steam cleaned yet again to remove the horrible odor. The oil is then bleached to get rid of the gray color. Synthetic vitamins and artificial flavors are mixed in. The mixture is packaged with blocks or tub. The, the mixture is packaged into blocks and tubs and promoted to the public as a health food. You guys, if you wonder why your children have learning disabilities, if you wonder why you're sick, if you wonder why 
as a nation, we are we are so diseased, and why chronic diseases or yeah, chronic diseases are rising epidemically off the charts right now. It's because of the foods we're eating. And as the article said, there are many bad things in the standard American diet, but one of the worst, the worst thing, is the industrial seeds and oils and the process that they go through, and the amount that we eat these things in our diet. If you want to go back and heal your body and not vilify fat, but get the right cellular healing, brain healing, body healing fats into your diet, use this first list here. You want to get real grass-fed butter and ghee for cooking and spreading uh, into your diet. You want to get cream and whole fat raw grass-fed milk into your diet, not pasteurized, not homogenized, whole fat raw milk. You want to get free-range egg yolks, egg yolks in your diet. Um, I personally don't eat pork for religious reasons, but historically, pork fat and bacon grease has been used for cooking. <laughs> now, I do use other types of animal fats. We cook with beef tallow. Beef tallow is the same as lard, except it's from a cow. It's a, it's a cleaner type of a fat. We use that for frying. You can use duck fat and chicken fat, coconut oil, palm oil, as long as it's sustainably sourced. Olive oil <laughs> for your salad dressings. The salad dressing that we use that contains olive oil is called brag dressing. Uh, sesame oil, cold pressed in small amounts, and then one of my favorite ones that we take daily is cod liver oil because it contains loads of activated, bioavailable vitamin A and vitamin D. The things that you want to avoid from your diet, excuse me, are your cooking oils, margarines, spreads, shortenings, artificial whipped creams, non-dairy creamers, snack foods, read all the chips, pretzels, and cookies labels there, uh, cake frosting, fried foods, commercial mayonnaises and salad dressings, dips, uh, commercial nut butters and spreads, all fast foods, uh, including pizzas and most restaurant foods. <laughs> now, does that mean you can't ever eat these foods? No. Well, I teach my clients how to make healthy versions of these things using healthy fats, uh, but it's all the, it's all the you know, processed foods in America that you have to cut out. Read your labels. You'll see canola, soybean, corn, cottonseed, vegetable oil. If you see those words, if you see those words, you know that that is not a product for you. So I hope this was helpful. Thanks a lot for watching. I'll see you in the next video.